Here we go. Nebraska will be taking on Colorado this Saturday in one of the biggest games of the year for the Huskers. So in today's video, I'm going to go over my complete preview for the Huskers versus the Buffaloes. What does Colorado bring to the table and everything else in between. So really quick, we have a lot to talk about. If you were excited about Saturday, I know I am. Make sure to hit that like button. And hey, if you're new to the channel, a returning viewer, or even a Colorado fan, make sure to subscribe. I post daily Nebraska football content, and I'm not slowing down anytime soon. So if you don't want to miss anything this season, please hit that subscribe button. It would help me out greatly. But without further ado, let's get into it. Talking about this matchup, Nebraska versus Colorado, Matt Rule versus Coach Prime. So starting off with the Colorado Buffaloes. They enter this game 1-0 after a victory versus North Dakota State last week at home. Deion Sanders, of course, in his second year with Colorado, went 4-8 in his first campaign. Um, previously with Jackson State, went 27-6 and with them. And really, he brought a lot of life back to this Colorado program, which was really dormant for the last two decades. So Deion Sanders, again, very good hype man, but is he a good coach? We'll get to that. Colorado played Nebraska last year, of course, went in the Buffalo's favor, 36-14, and honestly, pretty dominating game for Colorado. But as a lot of Buffalo fans will tell you when you make fun of their 4-8 record, they'll, they'll tell you that they're a completely different team. So is Nebraska. So last year's matchup doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the slightest because if Colorado fans want to sit here and tell you they're a different team, Nebraska is as well going to be completely different programs matching up this Saturday. So let's start it off with Colorado. What can we expect from their offense? Well, they bring in one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Not really debatable at this point, Shador Sanders. This guy is incredible. Gunslinger type of guy, but also pretty mobile. Last year had a little bit over 3,000 yards through the air, 27 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. And re-watching that North Dakota State game on Thursday, he was incredible, threw for over 400 yards, four touchdowns, only had one interception that really wasn't his fault if you saw the interception. I mean, it, it went off a couple of hands, went off a kneecap for North Dakota State, and the Bison got on top of it. But other than that, I mean, Shador is a very good quarterback. We'll give him credit. But I will say this, the only times that I think Shador is not that great is when the pocket breaks down, he feels like he needs to make a play, and he forces a ball that really shouldn't be thrown. So if Nebraska can get active pressure on him, I think Shador could really start to struggle. But again, very good quarterback. That is uh, the first thing we'll talk about when it comes to Colorado. Talking about the running back core, it's bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Colorado's rushing game is really, really bad. Only two backs got carries versus North Dakota State. Dallas Hayden, nine carries for 20 yards, averaging just over two yards per carry. And then they had a walk-on in Charlie Offerdahl with five carries for 15 yards. So again, they did not have more than 40 yards rushing with their with their backs. That's pretty pretty bad for Colorado. Nebraska should dominate that aspect of the ball game. But to be completely fair, Colorado is not trying to hide what they're doing. They're not trying to run the football. They're trying to pass. So let's talk about their wide receiver core because this is one of the best in the country, and they proved that once again versus North Dakota State. Travis Hunter. I mean, he's one of one. Top five wide receiver in America. Great ball skills, great hands, really good route running. Had 150 yards and three touchdowns. Again, had some just absolute incredible catches versus the Bison. But he didn't even lead the team in receiving yards. Jimmy Horn had about 200 yards. And man, oh man, is he fast? Is he shifty? He could do everything. And they also have a transfer from, from uh, I believe it was FAU and LeJante Wester, who gets super shifty, super fast. Uh, could bring any ball to the house. So I really like the receiver core. I think it's deep as well. I've talked about that all offseason. Again, we can talk bad about Colorado and their depth and their coaching staff. What you cannot deny is they have a good quarterback and they have a good receiver core for that reason. This is Nebraska's biggest test in the secondary we've had um, in a long time. So we need that unit to step up. Talking about their O-line unit, it's questionable to say the least. I really actually like their tackles. Um, they, per they perform pretty well against North Dakota State. They have true freshman Jordan Seaton at left tackle and Tyler Brown at right tackle. Both of them did not give up a single sack or were graded out pretty well according to pro football focus. But 
Their interior line is not very good. Their guard play was not awesome. Their center play was not awesome. So I feel like Nebraska's D-line, they're going to dominate, to say the least. This is one of the best D-lines in America. Colorado is has a mid-offensive line at best. So listen, talking about Colorado's offense as a whole, they're going to try to pass. They're not going to sugarcoat. They're not going to try to establish a running game at all. Like They will come out gunslinging. That's what they do. So Nebraska, the secondary has got to step up. And if you can force them to run, if you can shut down Shador just a little bit, get pressure on him consistently, it will be almost impossible for Colorado's offense to get going. Let's go to the defense for the Buffaloes because this was one of the worst units in all of college football last year. They were horrendous. This year, a little bit improved, but still not great. Their defensive line was not good versus North Dakota State. One thing that was evident was how good the Bison were on the ground, not only with the running backs, but with the quarterback running game. It felt like whenever um, North Dakota State would run, and they just had an open lane every single time. So I don't love this defensive line for Colorado. And Warren Sapp, I mean, he was not very happy about it either. That's their new D-line coach. Um, Nebraska should torch him. Should torch him with our O-line play. You feel good about containing the trenches both um, on the O-line and D-line. Linebacker core is not much better. They bring back every single starter last year, which is kind of odd for Colorado. Um, again, it's 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 nothing it's not nothing crazy. It's not terrible, but nothing to write home about for the linebackers. Um, and then their secondary, you'd think that a Deion Sanders coach team would have an elite secondary. And honestly, their secondary was not bad last year. They played pretty bad versus North Dakota State. Shiloh did not grade out very well, gave up a couple completions, missed some tackles, was had some late hits. He was pretty dirty versus the Bison. Travis Hunter had a good game. That's what you expect from one of the best players in America. But besides him, there was just a lot of inconsistencies in the secondary. Again, take a note, they're playing an FCS team. North Dakota State, through the air, went 22 for 26. That is pretty impressive. So, again, Colorado secondary gave up a lot of completions, a lot of dink and dunks. Uh, I believe that Dylan Ryle is going to have a field day, especially at Memorial Stadium. So, this defense, I'd say, is a little bit improved for Colorado, but in general, it's bad. It'll be one of the worst in college football once again, and I'm not concerned. So, talking about Colorado as a team, they're talented. And I will say this, Deion Sanders is going to get them ready to go. Say what you want about Deion. But that pregame speech at Memorial Stadium is going to move mountains. Like He's going to get them feeding off the hatred. So Colorado's going to be ready to play just like they were last year. They're going to want to win this game just as bad as any other game on their schedule. But I think Nebraska wins. And I'll get to, of course, my predictions as the week progresses. So watch out for that video. But before I get out of here, I want to give you my keys to the game for Nebraska. How does Nebraska win this football game? Number one, control time of possession essentially you need to make colorado play your brand of football because last year colorado made nebraska play their brand of football colorado was passing all over them going fast pace and the huskers couldn't catch up nebraska this time needs to run it down their throat control the time um, and then you know have a pass here and there um, to basically catch this defense off guard i think they'll do just that so i feel good about that first key to the game second key to the game the secondary needs to step up Again, that's just going to be the, the number one thing. The secondary needs to play well. We feel good about Tommy Hill. We feel good about um, Deshaun Singleton. But there's some question marks with Malcolm Hartzog, Marquise Buford. So you need to play well. Colorado has more weapons than just Travis Hunter. If you can just shut down their passing attack just a little bit, get pressure on Shador, man, oh, man, you're in for a very good game. Third key to the game, Nebraska's crowd needs to be a 12th man, meaning they need to be loud. On third down, every single person in that stadium needs to be on their feet. I don't care if you're five years old. I don't care if you're 90 years old. Get on your feet. Get loud. Help out your defense. This needs to be the loudest crowd I've ever seen Memorial. Again, stand the entire game. That's what I'd say. If you're there, stand the entire game. Get loud. Get into it because this is big. Um, and this is going to be a crowd that we've never seen at Nebraska. So it needs to be a 12th man. We need to get ready to go for this atmosphere last key to the game make your darn field goals we know that matt rule doesn't trust his kicking game we saw that versus utep but unlike utep you're actually going to have some field goal opportunities that you need to knock down so if we're we have a field goal from 30 yards out 35 yards out even 40 you need to make it because every point matters all right those are my key to the games for nebraska and i'll say this 
if Nebraska loses this game, it's because one thing happens and one thing happens alone. Colorado can pass at will and Shador has a field day. That's their key to the game. Not too difficult. So we'll see if Nebraska can shut down the passing attack. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this matchup, Nebraska versus Colorado. Again, comment that down below. Hey, if you made this far in the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, folks, go Big Red, go Matt Rule, and see you in the next one.